welcome to Module 3, Health and Risk Assessment. This module will explore several of the human health dimensions of rural sanitation in the Arctic, and will emphasize the importance of the active engagement of community members with scientists and professionals. I am Rhonda Johnson, and I am a professor of public health at the University of Alaska Anchorage. And um, I have spent much of my professional career as a primary care clinician, which is looking at individual health disease and treatment. And then for the last 20 years, I've been working in population health, which is where we look at disease and health across populations. And we've heard several presentations already about epidemiology, um, patterns of disease and health, and that's a primary science of public health. But what I want to talk to you today about is some other kinds of public health approaches in science that might be helpful for your projects. So we're going to talk about participatory approaches and health behavior change. And basically, some of the things I'm going to talk about are not new ideas, but some of them might be new to you. So we'll talk about health behavior change and social marketing, community-based participatory research and practice, and then spend a little time on some typical behavior change myths and examples, and I'll end with resources that I hope will be helpful for you. So under Nothing New Under the Sun, this article is from the 1950s in the American Journal of Public Health, and basically it's saying if we want sanitation programs to work, we need to understand the health concerns and beliefs of the people who will be using the systems. And that was important 65 years ago, and it's still important today. During that same time, there was discussion about the importance of beliefs and customs, even the ones that are not specifically related to health. And so some of the approaches we're going to talk about today are ways to think and get more information about the health, belief, practices, strengths, and resources of the communities in which we're working. So let's talk a little bit about health behavior change and social marketing. So changing behavior is not just a matter of giving people new information or their willpower or just technology, because all of us are really complex and there's other factors that determine what we do and don't do. And so social change or social marketing is just like marketing that you might think about when we try to sell a product for personal profit. But social marketing is when you're trying to change behavior for a social good. And one of the ways we think about public health is that it's assuring conditions in which all people can be healthy. So we're assuming that the health of the community is a social good. So this social marketing uses typical marketing principles to influence behaviors that benefit society as well as the individual. So for example, a clean and healthy community is good for everyone. And sometimes people confuse social marketing with social media. Social media is a channel of communication and social marketers use social media, but it's not the only kind of communication they use and it's not the same thing as social marketing. So I want to highlight some of the hallmarks of social marketing. First is you assume that there's a behavior that you want to change. And in, in public health, maybe we know we have high rates of tobacco. We want people to stop smoking or we know there's high rates of obesity, we want them to increase their exercise or change their diet. So there's some kind of behavior we want to change. Um, there's also all kinds of theories. This is a typical or a different kind of public health science. And health behavior change, um, there's theories for individual change, family change, community change, societal change, and there's different theories for depending on what level you want to have the behavior change. You also have to decide who you want to change. Is it policy makers? Is it local community people? Is it decision makers? Is it healthcare providers? You have to decide who is the focus of your behavior change. And then you do intensive research. You talk to those people, you read about those people, and you try and figure out things from their perspective not yours, whatever your disciplinary expertise is, and the outcome is your plan to get your message across. 
And this social marketing is used often in public health and environment, and it's often combined with this CBPR, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, uh, community-based participatory methods. So remember, it's all about behaviors, and there's some behaviors that we want people to stop doing, to reject or abandon. And here's some examples. We don't want people to throw out gray water out the window, or maybe we want them to do what they're doing a little differently. So if you're gonna reuse gray water, don't use it more than this many times. And there's some things they might be doing good that we wanna reinforce, like scrubbing the steam bath after every use. So you have to be really thoughtful. What is the behavior you wanna change and which direction do you wanna change it? You want it to go up, you want it to go down, you want it to stay the same or continue. The second part is this idea that it should be theory informed. This may not be your area of expertise, but what I want you to know is there's a whole literature and a discipline about theories of health behavior change at many different levels. And um, so there's a, a science that can help you with your messaging. And on this slide, I just wanna highlight uh, number five and six. So let's say you've decided who is your audience and you've decided what behavior you want to change and you're trying to figure out now what is our potential barriers to that change and what are some benefits to what they're doing now and what's the competition that they might have in their life uh, to make that change. Um, and the best way to figure this out is to talk to the people and then you decide based on that additional information about your audience or your target group, uh, you decide what your message is gonna be. And then you use typical marketing strategies to create a communication plan. So I wanna give you a quick example. If you wanna read more about it, you can see it in Dickie et al. and it's in the end resources. Basically, this was a Chinese program. It was oriented for disease prevention and the idea, the behavior they wanted to change was to build, use, and maintain a toilet, which was new. And they looked at, uh, since this was a community level um, intervention, they wanted everybody to do this new behavior. They used a social norms or social cognitive theory approach, which is at that level. They decided the villagers they wanted to focus on were those that were raising pigs and eating raw pork. And then they tried to understand this, what were the barriers or unique contextual factors in this area. And they learned that there was distrust of outside experts. And so you're already at a disadvantage if you're coming in from the outside. They also preferred a particular kind of toilet. They wanted the squat versus the sit style. And yet there was variation. Some wanted a very simple design and some wanted a very elaborate design. And one of the things that was pretty interesting is when we they asked people about, well, why would you even think about building, using, and maintaining a new toilet? It was for convenience, for privacy, cleanliness, and progress. Nobody actually specifically mentioned disease prevention. So that impacted how they designed the introduction of the toilets to that community. First, they had examples of it because it was new to the area. They made it very fun with a kickoff fair. They had communication strategies that made it um, information for the community with brochures. Uh, to get over the um, distrust of outsiders, they engaged local people to uh, engage with people and to be the person building. And um, they tested this. Uh, one of the villages, some of the villages, they did all this stuff. Other villages, they just introduced the toilets as they usually would. And in the ones where they took the time to figure out what was going on and how people thought about this intervention, there was much greater satisfaction and use and maintenance of the toilets in the places where they made that effort. So basically, social marketing is an effective, often used framework for changing behaviors for the good it's complementary to your technology solutions. It's not just education, but it is related to education, communication, and information. And the things that are different than just education or health communication is 
you take time to get in-depth knowledge of your target audience and the way you sell the behavior is in uh, the terms of the view of the target audience and yet you can still use that whole suite of techniques that are used for commercial marketing. So the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is community-based participatory research and practice because applied research has impact uh, in the community and often in public health and engineering we're trying to solve problems and we're trying to take what we know in the lab or in from basic science and put it into practice in the community. And one way to have more impact with our intervention and to learn more is the CBPR. And basically I'm going to give a couple definitions of this. Uh, it's really an intersection between science and practice and one definition is it's um, asking a question with the participation of those affected by the issue for the purpose of both education and action. Uh, another one is, uh, it's a recognition since it's participatory, that you need to have formalized structures to ensure community participation. So you can't assume it's going to happen unless you put it in your process. And then the third definition is that as you engage community members in your process, it's important that they are equitably involved, that they don't just have a token role, that it's a meaningful role and that the research topic or the project is of importance to the community and that you're taking different kinds of knowledge, uh, theirs and yours, together to take action for, for social change. And in a public health perspective, we're trying to improve health and eliminate health disparities. And a lot of sanitation projects are, are trying to do that as well. Just a few comments about principles of CBPR. First is, sometimes our interventions assume at, uh, it should happen at the individual level, but in many settings, uh, the community identifies as a community. So it may be more appropriate to be thinking about how to engage the entire community or the leaders of the community in your intervention. It takes a very strength-based approach. In, in public health and epidemiology, we're often trying to identify problems and uh, so that we can fix them. But if your community or your place is always on the bottom of the statistics, it can be discouraging to read about or know about. And so another way to look at this is to see what is going right in the community. What are the strengths of the community? And let's measure that. Um, again, as we said earlier, it should have part partnership in all the phases and that the learning goes in more than one direction. It's not just technical or professional expertise. It's also the outsiders, the professionals learning about what are priorities and realities for the people living in the community. And maybe as um, the community members learn more about the sanitation intervention, the people who design the intervention learn more about some of the realities of the life there. And you have your learning information, but you're also making a difference in the community. It's really important that whatever is happening is um, relevance to the community and that you have a big picture and it's not just we want to solve this problem we don't recognize some of the others and um, these last three are more related to to research and dissemination but the general idea is that if we take this approach being community engaged and based and participatory that this builds capacity um, on all sides and reduces dependence on professional outsiders. It ensures cultural and local competence. It facilitates sustainability, um, which is really important, particularly in uh, sanitation and water uh, sewage management. And it enhances the fit and productivity of the programs. And we've had some failed technological solutions in lots of different places. So this um, can help address feelings of being manipulated from the outside by people who don't understand. So CBPR is something else to put in your toolkit.